Fernando's GF, all right. I will play first. That, of course, helps. Eddie with nothing to go after it, not ideal, but. We've got a fairly okay curve here. I don't think we can throw it away. Opponent on Temple. Are they also playing Gruul, or is this the Teamer? No, not Teamer. Uh, Trickery, probably. Could also be Teamer. I've seen Temples in Teamer lately. But no Obash suggests not Teamer. Alright, Timber Crown. Could be Gruul. Stomp. Definitely Gruul. Sure. Well, a Crowan War is good in that case. It's a very nice draw for us. Like, if they just slam this Bone Crusher Giant and we a Crowan War, we're in great shape. Ah, oh, it is Teamer. Okay. Fire Prophecy. A bit unfortunate. At least we have the Questing Beast to follow up. Hold our passage in case we find more landfall cards. Get in there. There's the Bone Crusher. Probably means they're not doing anything else yet. Alright, we could have Crow in War, or we could Cleave. I think a crow in war is probably better. I also think I want to hold the uh, smashing. They play a fairly large number of creatures with low toughness. Also, Embercleave here should just be lethal. Visionary, don't care. Not even a little bit. Okay, so they need exactly Borrower or another Fire Prophecy here to beat us. Uh, no reason to hold this forest, really. Unless we draw like a brush fire off the top. Oh, they're gonna bounce the Akron War. Sure. I'll still believe in my cleave here. That puts them to two. And we still have an Akron War in hand. Which, if they go Luka Coma here, we can a Crow and War Coma, and then we're still favored after that, I believe. not Luca. Let's... All right. If they don't have another borrower here, they are pretty much dead. I have first strike. I don't see any reason not to do this. Another borrower or 
any two mana removal for a questing beast. Whatever it is, we're going to find out. What do you got? Okay, it's the other borrower, sure. Let's see, I think we're playing out the love struck beast here. We could also yoink their borrower. Of course that they can kill with a uh, bone crusher. Let's see, we haven't played a land yet. I think it's just playing this love struck beast here. And they still haven't revealed any creature capable of blocking questing beast. And that has haste, so we'll save that for our next turn. can't block anything I've got, might as well attack with it. Uh, yeah, questing beast. This pathway means we can equip Embercleave without giving up our Shatter Skull Smashing, which is pretty good. Put it on the questing beast because it can still attack regardless of uh, getting rid of our 1 1. Are you putting it on the 1 1 is actually. No. No, that's not it. Alright. No, the Eddie can't block the questing beast anyway. I think we put it here. This way we're not. We still win if they have one borrower. Okay. Got him. If they had one borrower and they bounced the questing beast again, then they could sacrifice their eddy and still survive. Uh, let's see, they have a lot of creatures which died at dragon fire, so I think we can put a couple of those in. I don't think we want red cap melee. Dragonfire can also hit Planeswalkers, which is nice. Uh, maybe Soulseer? I don't think so, though. Vivian's a bit slow against Turbo Coma. They have a lot of blockers for Perforous Intervention. Alright, what are we taking out? A Crowan War here, of course, is great. I don't think we want to be playing long enough for Ox can cut that. Ooze here is pretty good because our opponent is also playing lots of creatures. Um, they have a lot of flyers. Well, not a lot, but they have some flyers, which means Phoenix isn't stellar. Uh, are we just cutting a land on the draw? Perhaps. Maybe it's one of the dragon fires. Yeah, I mean, with stomp and three removal spells, that plus the smashings, that should be enough. I think we keep a prophecy over a dragon fire here. All right, this hand is good. If we get one untapped land by turn three, we are absolutely golden. If not, we're in a bit of a rough spot, but not too bad. Our 
opponent has a spell. Hopefully it's not one that kills brush fire. But anything they have that kills brush fire also kills ooze. Brush fire is more aggressive. Yeah, that's fine. One for one trades should benefit the player on the draw. Still looking for an untapped land here. Do not get it, huh? We'll go for combat, try and attack in. We might end up uh, fire prophesying here. Play Mammoth tapped. Let's see. This definitely feels like they have another removal spell, so I don't really want to play out the ooze. If they do nothing, we stomp face. If they play a creature, we fire prophecy it. Yep. Let's see, do I want to fire prophecy that or stomp it? I guess stomp is more efficient because I probably want to play the Bone Crusher soon. Well, maybe I'm playing Ooze next turn now that we have creatures to eat. There's an Eddy. Do they have anything to draw with it? They do not. Excellent. That means we can get rid of the eddy. I think we're declining here. I'm happy putting the ooze out and then we've got Ember Cleave and a bunch of good creatures. It's not ideal, but I think it's fine. they want to one for one our ooze again, that's fine. They have another stomp, sure. Okay. They draw the land, which is a little awkward. But I think we're just playing a 5-5 five five because it beats their 4-3s. Put it on them to kill yet another 1-1. One one. They've had four removal spells so far this game, if you count the Borrower. So they've got to be due for some spell that doesn't remove a 1-1. One -one. I doubt they run that many here. They seem to be hesitating though, so they've got some play other than Bone Crusher. Alright, five removal spells. Sure. Whatever that last card is, they like it, and it holds priority for two mana. Alright, well, that land means we can play out both of these, which is fine. Well, any 1-1 one, one and our opponent is in a whole world of trouble. Assuming they don't have another way to remove one. Okay, that Triome probably came off the top. I think I just want to cleave here. Believe in the cleave. Let's go. Now we hold up our questing beast for a rainy day. As long as we keep their board clear, they can't pop coma out of nowhere. Another Bone Crusher's fine, doesn't do anything to me. 
Alright, that's not a 1-1. One, one. Slam the questing beast. Put some pain on him, one way or another. Do I want to put the Ember Cleave on the questing beast? I don't think so. I'm just as happy trading it for the Bone Crusher as I am trading my Bone Crusher here. They do have a good number of creatures that can block Questing Beast and do so profitably. And they go to one either way. Wilt, huh? Alright. Sure. I think I'm going to hold this uh, Fabled Passage just in case we get a Mammoth or a Brushfire or something. Alright, can they find Coma off the top here? No, but that is also pretty good. Alright, there's a creature. Does not allow our Love Stark Beasts to attack, but does draw a card. Alright, Rimrock Knight. Well, that can get our Bone Crusher to kill their Love Stark Beast, which is fine. And then we play it post combat to draw two. Seems decent. With a Henge on board, I don't care about paying two life for that. draw. Let's see, do I have enough mana to stomp and play Bone Crusher here? Yes, I do. Am I stomping the 1-1 one, one or stomping face? Probably doesn't matter. I don't think even uh, Coma saves them here. don't think there's anything they could possibly have that would save them here. Very nice. Alright, maybe those boys at Channel Fireball are onto something. Deck seems kinda good. Let's see. How were we in that teamer match? Let's see. Embercleave and Greathenge can be a pretty good engine over the Coma combo, especially if our opponent never draws the means to acquire Coma. Uh, also very effective at getting through adventure creatures that don't have their own Embercleaves. Yeah, we still have the best valued creatures in the format with these two, and still get stupid value with Eddie. Uh, yeah, deck is perhaps better than I gave gave it credit before. Uh, we just absolutely thrashed two of the most popular decks in the format right now. So uh, yeah, can, can endorse this version of Gruul. Um, See, I guess Brontodon is here for the mirror because these are really the only artifacts or enchantments that are a big issue in the format right now, and they're not that common unless people start playing this deck more. Uh, same thing with Masked Vandal. I'm not sure about Masked Vandal. It's a little undervalue in terms of aggressive stats, which is important for this kind of deck. But yeah, deck is deck is good. What can I say? Play it, win profit and that'll be all for now thanks for watching